point of your existence. To feel. Because you've never done it, you can never know it. But it's as vital as breath. And without it, without love, without anger, without sorrow, breath is just a rock. It's not about being happy. That's the thing. I'm just trying to get through each day. I can't keep asking myself, am I happy? Am I happy? It just makes me more miserable. I just thought you were like Janet, but then... Tomorrow, fucking chicken. So, what's with that, huh? Forget? After I've seen the outline of my brother's body on the floor, they expect me to forget? I want to kill those sons of bitches. I want to blow their fucking heads off. I don't like to smile unless I have a reason. Is that for this time? Just when you're a kid. Welcome back to the Skewered Universe podcast. My name is Jeff. And I'm Lan. Suck dick. <laughs> we know we've been gone for a while, but we're back and we have a slightly different episode for you. Not doing a movie review. We're just kind of doing a laid back, chill. Uh, how would you call it? Would you say a, a ranty episode or just a catch up episode? Catch up episode. Yeah. Sort of a catch-up thing, because we haven't done anything in a while, so... Say catch-up one more time. I'm not going to. <laughs> it's a catch-up episode. I'm sorry if I sound nasally, because my allergies have been really stupid. It's okay. The weather we're dealing with here in California is fantastic, but hell for allergies. It has been raining. So much the last, what would you say, like, over the last month? I'm not even going to talk about it because I'm not going to jinx it. All right. Enough said. Anyway, moving on. People keep talking about how cold it is in California. <laughs> I'm like, stop. I'm not even talking about the cold. I just like the rain. Yeah, and as soon as we talk about it, it's going to stop. So. so, All right. No more about it. Let's move on. <laughs> I like the rain. <laughs> So the last time you heard our illustrious voices, our our beautiful, coherent ramblings was with Paul. We covered Fade to Black, and then we kind of went radio silent. Uh, and that's my fault. I would like to say the first reason was because I had PMS and went on a rampage for a week, and then my allergies started bothering me, and <laughs> that went on for about a week. So, yeah, here we are. Yay. That, and I also burned myself out because I started the beginning of this year, and I posted this up on the, the Skewered Universe Facebook page, so those of you who have probably read that. I went hard out of the gate, starting to like lay out the entire year's worth of podcasts, what we could do, what guests we could have, what special things we could do, and I just crashed hard, so I, I I stopped. I didn't want to, but I needed a break, because mentally I had just wore myself out. But I'm back. I'm back. Oh, yeah, brother. I have a lot of energy tonight. I don't know why. Maybe all the coffee I drink. I don't know. But I'm back. Uh, if you want something most recent, you can head over to our Patreon. You can support us, and you can hear what a casual fan such as myself of Star Wars thinks of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So do that. Patreon.com slash Skewered Universe Podcast. Support the show. We'd appreciate it. So as we said, this is a little different episode. It's just us, uh, you know, getting back into the swing of things, letting you know what we've been doing, what's been going on. How do we want to do this? Do you want to go first with something you have, or would you like me to start? No, I don't have anything. Okay, well, I do have one little uh, ranty thing I'd like to get off my chest. Is that possible? You can time me, so I don't go overboard. You're fine. All right, so it's about wrestling. I'm going to do this quick. Quick fire. The February 8th episode of Dynamite. The Acclaimed went into the main event as the Tag Team Champions, then the Guns beat them and were awarded the Tag Team titles. Now, all of a sudden that happens and wrestling Twitter becomes even more of a hellscape, you know, wanting the demise of AEW. Tony Khan needs to step down as Booker. He's the worst Booker ever. The Guns fucking suck. Blah, blah, blah. 
Here's my take on that. Did the guns need to win the titles? No. Is there a reason for it? I believe there is. So just just let things play out. Stop being some entitled piece of shit fan and thinking you know better. Because here's the thing. 95% of us watching the product have never been in the business, never done any part of it, and trying to book an entire fucking wrestling show week after week. It's going to take a lot to do that. So until you've done it, shut the fuck up. There's probably a reason. It's probably going to be FTR coming back and beating the two little fucks for the titles again. And if FTR happens to go back to WWE, then the Acclaimed will step up, or maybe there will be another tag team that comes in and unseats the guns. Until then, stop bitching. Because if WWE did the same exact thing with the tag team you hated, you wouldn't bitch. You'd be like, well, let it play out. But the minute AEW does it, because all of you think Tony Khan is nothing more than a cokehead fuck, fuck up, you just shit on it. So calm down. Let it play out. I'm done. Over. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Positive. You're, you're pretty passionate. Yeah, but I wanted, I've been holding that in for so long. I was like, I wanted to do it. Quick, to the point, short, sweet, done. There you go. And uh, one more thing. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just drew a fucking blank on what I wanted to say. <laughs> this is what happens when I'm not watching a movie or prepared ahead of time and it's just off the cuff, you know, letting everybody know what's been going on and catching up. Condiment up. Penis. <laughs> oh, oh, dick. Rude. <laughs> I wasn't calling you a dick. I was just saying in general. I was just spouting dick into the universe to see what would happen. Putting your wishes out there. More or less. You know, you, you hope for the best and expect the worst. So while I would want something that was beautiful and model-like, I will get something that's syphilitic and going to kill me. Anyway, is there anything you have you'd like to talk about, Leanne? No, I can't beat syphilis. <laughs> Lots of people can't beat syphilis. It's a horrendous disease. But I meant more, do you have anything you'd like to contribute right now? Anything specific you want to talk about? Or would you like me to move on to my next thing? How many things you got? I don't know. No more rants. I mean, I could. I did detail some some ranty notes if I wanted to do it, but I don't want this to turn into the the Fox News version of our podcast where we're just I don't like this and bam bam bam. That's not what we're here for. We're here for fun. People don't like to hear um, complaining. Yeah, that's why I only had a short rant, and I'm not going to continue to do it because they'll turn off. <laughs> They'll all do now. They can fast forward through my rant. It's fine. It's very easy to do. You don't have to listen to me spout off about wrestling. <laughs> spout off, dick. <laughs> Ejaculation. <laughs> I'm fucking six, okay? I am a child. I'm a child. Have you been watching anything? I have. I have several things I've been watching here. Oh. I have, I have a few things. I only Some... have one thing. Do you want to wait, or do you want to talk about it first? I'll wait. Okay. You did? I, what? I, may have, I don't think we talked about because we haven't recorded since then. You had me watch a movie. Probably. With Maggie Gyllenhaal and James Spader. Yeah. Secretary. Yeah. Very interesting movie. Good movie. Yeah. Different than I expected. Good. Yeah. Yeah, very much. I'm like, I'm like the worst. <laughs> yes, good. Good. All right. <laughs> kind of like, oh no, that Rick and Morty episode where they're in a simulation, <laughs> but it's powered down to like 10%. <laughs> My man. This is human music. <laughs> oh, human music. Yeah. Right on. My man! <laughs> Slow down! <laughs> My man! <laughs> NPCs are just phasing through trees and yeah. getting stuck in things. That's like what that. I am. I'm an NPC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Yeah, I... Uh... Okay, well, I've, I've watched... been watching Shadow and Bone. The second episode, uh, second season. That's right, second season is available. Yeah, I finished it. <laughs> Can you tell I'm enthused? Was it chaotic and emotional roller coaster? It was really good, but now there's like, you know, usually they leave one thing open that's like, oh, it's going to be season three. Are they going to have a season three? I wonder. And it's like this, the way this ended, it's like there, there has to be a season three now. Like there mm-hmm. are too many things that are leading into a season three. Too many open-ended things you, that need to be tied up. You're like, if you don't do a season three... And I, I don't want to give anything away, but, like, something does not get resolved. Yeah. <laughs> now, not to, not, I'm not going to bring up who it is, but is this the one storyline from the first season that you were really hoping would yeah. get some kind of resolution? Yeah. Or, okay. We've talked about it. I don't want to do it here because it's a recent release to Netflix. I don't yeah. want to spoil it for anyone who's working their way through it. Uh, I, I just powered through it. You did. I didn't even realize you were watching it. You're like, oh yeah, I'm like halfway through. I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Was it really good? Yeah, we find out certain people that we didn't think were Grishas are Grishas. And it's like, oh. Was it almost like a like a just discovering their powers kind of thing? Like maybe they were dormant for longer than normal or something? Or just that no one had ever tested them to see. Yes. Okay. But also, an, an they've known the whole okay. time. Ah, uh, known, but maybe didn't want. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. So there's some interesting... And it's not just, like, one, it's, like, multiple people, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I want to tell you everything. <laughs> I want to watch it because I wasn't sure I would like the first season because I've never, I was never huge into fantasy as a kid, but it was really good. Yeah. It was really good. It's a little confusing at first when you're trying to figure out who the characters are, but once you get past that, it's really good. Yeah. Well, I had you to guide me and you're like, we don't care about this person. You're like, yeah. Okay. This one is important. Pay attention. Yes. Okay. Good. I had my own little uh, strategy guide for watching. <laughs> That's all I've been watching. That's that, it, really? That and Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> and newer Intervention. Old. New or old Unsolved Mysteries? The newer ones, the I newer think. The newer ones, okay. I think so. I wasn't sure if maybe you had gone back to the old versions that we all grew up on and I don't were traumatized so. as children no, watching. No, I don't think so. It's on Netflix. So I'd have to look it up. They may only have the newer ones. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> that, that show in America's Most Wanted was one of the things that really fucking gave me nightmares as a kid. Yeah. It was goddamn, here's what they may look like today, aged up 20 years. No, technology then was, it was frightening. Here's our artist rendering. That looks like a demon. Thank you. I will never sleep again. That and then all the alien stories. He claimed to be abducted. And then there was no sign of his family ever again. Wait, what? what, what? And, like, the thing that gets me about all those stories is, like, all these people who don't know each other have the exact same story. And it's like, well, fuck, I don't believe in Bigfoot. But if ten people in this one place that don't know each other have the same story. Well, fuck. Now I guess I have to believe in Bigfoot. Yeah. What was... The other thing that was messed up was, like, the missing kids or just the missing persons. They've not been seen for over a year. Like, what the fuck? And now, because we know so much more, it's like, oh, yeah, if they're gone more than 48 hours, you can just presume them to be dead at this point. It's like, fuck. Depends on if they're with a stranger or a family member. Yeah, it's really, it gets they really dark. They last longer with strangers. And that's the fucked up part. But when you think about it, it makes more, it, as twisted as it is, it does make more sense. 
I'm sorry for bringing this down. No, 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 no. You're not bringing it down, but if you think it, it makes sense. Why would a family member want to keep that around? I mean, there's multiple reasons that we can go into. I'm not going to try and play, you know, armchair psychologist here, but it does make more sense, you know, a stranger could possibly try and get a ransom for returning that person. A family member is not going to try and do that. Anyway. Um, do you want to know what series I've been watching a lot of? <laughs> it slaps. <laughs> it slaps. You always knew, and you still know now, you hear that music, you're going to, there's going to be some crazy <laughs> some shit. fucked up shit's about to happen. God, back in the day, it was just, you'd hear that music and you're like, oh God, Robert Stack's coming with some fucked up stories tonight. Update. I know, I love the updates, because that means somebody got caught. It's like, update. They found the man who was killing killing and eating children at a strip mall in Las Vegas. He was surrounded by Asian hookers. Like, wait, what the fuck? Always finding them somewhere. So anyway, I've I've been doing a rewatch of South Park. Because you've been playing the game. I was I've been playing the game The Fractured Butthole. And I have a transmissions episode coming up talking about that, but I wanna I'll touch on it a little bit here. Uh it's a really fun game. I didn't know I would enjoy a turn based RPG as much as I do. I think it's more fun because it's South Park and there's a lot of swearing. And anytime, anytime children swear, I find it hilarious. Some people will be like, that's bad parenting, letting your child say fuck and shit. I'm like, eh, if they're young enough, it's, it's funny. And then if they tell them, hey, you can't really go using that word. We don't know what happens when the camera's cut off after they get their TikTok and their views. Anyway, uh, yeah, Fractured But Whole is fun. So I decided to go back and start rewatching South Park. I was I was never a heavy watcher of the series, but I watched a lot of the episodes. <laughs> you can tell when the change happened to where they were just like, we're just going to say whatever the fuck we want, and we'll just censor the language. We're not going to have two different scripts. Like, here's the unrated version for the DVDs we'll release, and here's the TV version. No, everything is just, shut the fuck up, Cartman, and it's just bleak for TV. Strangely enough, a lot of what they talk about, a lot of the messed up things, still relevant today. Very relevant. So, I'm going to say, if anyone just shits on South Park for being like trash TV, there's actually a really smart underlying message to these episodes a lot of the time. Until you get to the Butters episode and it's just talking about his dad going to the gay bathhouse. I like the one episode where uh, I think he just keeps shooting people in the balls, and Carpet is like, that's so fucked up! <laughs> Butters is my favorite. And apparently, from what I was reading, they based him on one of the producers who basically talks like that. I've been seeing a bunch of stuff on YouTube, like interviews with them, and they're like, the inspiration for Butters was basically one of the producers on the show. He's like, they're like, we're going to put you in the show. He's like, well, hey, guys, you better not actually do that. I'm going to be real mad with you. Like, he never swears. He's always saying things like that. And they'd be like, well, well, gosh darn it, guys, you better not do that. I'm like, that's that's actually funny. Apparently, like, a lot of characters, like, Stan's parents are based on one of the creator's parents. I don't remember which one it is. Mr. Mackey's based on a real counselor they had in school. I'm like, this is hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's really solid show. I I liked it way back when when it started, just because it was like ah, it's fucking funny, ha ha. Watching it as a forty three year old man, I'm like, oh, it's still funny, but you catch the other subtle little jokes here and there, or you catch things like the episode where it's the butter centric episode where the mom finds out the dad's going to gay bathhouses and she just loses it and goes to kill butters and they say oh it was some puerto rican guy 
Then all of a sudden, Gary Condon and the Ramses and OJ show up. Oh, yeah, some Puerto Rican guy did that to us, too. And then as they're going, you liar, they're just showing the faces of all these people that committed the crimes. You murderer! It's just OJ smiling, like, you murderer, you fucking murderer. I'm like, they're not being subtle. They're basically like, you're pieces of shit, you're liars, you're murderers. Just tell us what you did, because we all know you did it. I like that. But anyway, I'm having fun rewatching that. I can tell. <laughs> and it also helps that I have the humor of a six-year-old. So Mr. Hanky comes up. I'm like, ooh, poo jokes, poo jokes. I'm very happy about poop jokes. You want to talk about another movie you had me watch? Mm. A documentary? Mm. Katy Perry? Oh, well, I wasn't going to put that out there into the universe, but... I don't care. Okay. I'm I'm secure enough to admit that I actually enjoyed watching it to see, like, how tough she actually is. Yeah. Yeah. It's going through... I mean, the whole thing is basically talking about her rise, and then they just hit you with, oh, yeah, remember her and Russell Brand? Yeah, that collapsed so quick. And he was basically an asshole the way he handled it. And how she just went right up on stage anyway. And just like a fucking badass. Oh, I... mm, Yeah. Respect and admiration for her to be able to do that, because... And nobody knew what to do. They're like, she's crying. She doesn't cry. What are we (laughs) supposed to do? What do we do? (laughs) They were all at, like... DEFCON 5, or DEFCON 1. It was like, uh, the nukes are coming in, what do we do? And she pulled it together somehow, and yeah, so that was that was an interesting watch. I had, well, you didn't watch all of it, that it, uh, one and a half star movie I have listed here on Letterboxd, Death Spa. That was the one about the spa that was haunted, apparently, but then I, yeah, I remember it because I would, you, you checked out after you're like, um, you know what? You're like, <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't sound familiar at you all. You got up at one point, folded up your chair and we're like, bye. And you just <laughs> left. I was like, okay. It's, it's really bad. So the premise is there's this health club, right? This spa, this health spa. And it's supposedly haunted by the owner's dead wife. We know nothing about how she died except from dreams that he has of her on fire in a wheelchair. I don't remember if it's ever explained what happened to her. Did she have an illness? Did she hit, you know, did she set herself on fire? There's flashbacks showing her setting herself on fire. We don't know why. Was she crazy? Was she drugged? Whatever. But then it's like malfunctions are happening at the spa as a result of her haunting it or being in the computer system but then she's also possessed her twin brother and at certain points you can see it's her and then at other points it's him in her clothes it doesn't know what the fuck it wants to be i remember when you were in here in the beginning you were like what the fuck and i go oh because we, because you mentioned something about uh, the actress Karen Parsons who plays Hillary on The Fresh Prince being in that movie. Oh yeah. You're like, oh, I never pegged her to be in a horror movie. And I told you this was from 19, well, ni- it was filmed in 1989, I believe, and released in 1990. And you were like, this is 1990. I thought this was like 85. <laughs> it, uh, it's bad. Don't watch it. No. It's on Shutter, but don't watch it. I mean. If you have nothing better to do and want to waste some time, just just stare out the window. It's way more productive. I don't like the shit on movies, but this one is it's it's bad. I mean, I gave a movie like Rocktober Blood three stars because it was at least fun, even though I didn't. There was a lot in that. You could be like, well, why did this happen? Why is this happening? I'm not gonna go into that one because I've already talked about one shitty movie. So we also we also checked out a new comedy special that aired on Netflix. Yeah. From Chris Rock. Yeah. What'd you think of that? Um <clears throat> Yeah, it was funny. It was funny. I mean some of the jokes weren't my thing, but that's just because some comedians are not for everybody. 
Right. Um, I liked when he went into it with uh, Will Smith. That was pretty appreciated. <laughs> I think a lot of people appreciated when he finally just, <laughs> at the end, was just like, okay, fine, this is what you all came for. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it I was like, eh, okay, hmm. you know, I've seen some people say they don't like when their comedians just become grumpy old people. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about uh, Roseanne. Yeah. Well, Roseanne is just a grumpy, old, racist, crazy person. Yeah, I, I kind of think so. Like, I could see her just sitting out in front of her house and anyone that walks by who's not white, she's yelling at. Go back to your own country! Bitch, I was born here! Yeah, my that... pronouns are get a job. I'm like, oh my god, how hard is it? How hard? Like, let me go on a little bit of a rant. How hard is it to call someone by what they want you to call them? Jeff, you want me to call you Jeff, right? Right. Oh, that is so weird to me. I'm gonna call you Mary. It just makes me more comfortable. I can't handle pronouns. I don't understand how it works. So I'm like, how how hard is it, really? And even even in the community, like, ally communities, like, there was this one, I'm not going to get into it, but, like, people are calling this person a groomer, and they shouldn't be doing that because they don't have any actual evidence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, they held a live where they were you know, multiple large creators talking about it, and every single one of them misgendered this person. <laughs> every single one of them misgendered them, even though they were on their side. And I'm like, how hard is it? <laughs> they them. How hard is it? Sorry, I'm done. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I mean, if you don't know specifically if this person is identifying as he, him, she, her. They, them is an acceptable way to address them if you are unclear. As I perceive it. Don't call him an it. Nobody's an it. You wouldn't like it if you were called it. I mean, unless you're fucking running around in a clown outfit trying to eat children. Don't come to my front door, because I will bash your fucking head in. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone over my hatred and fear of clowns. Yeah, it's pretty funny. God damn. You subject <laughs> yourself to it. I know, it's like that uh, exposure therapy. <laughs> it's so funny to watch you scare yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, we've touched on it before, yeah, I don't... If I see any videos like on Facebook of somebody like, hey, I painted my face like a clown. I'm like, nope, skip. I don't even like when wrestlers paint their faces as clowns. I don't want to watch it. Asuka in WWE has started doing that. And I'm like, ah, you're good in the ring. I don't like that you painted your face like a clown like you did when you were in Japan going by the name Kana. Not into it. Real quick, back on the pronoun thing. I don't get why people make it so hard. They use pronouns every day. Yeah. They just don't they want to use certain ones. And it's funny because <laughs> they'll address people with those certain things correctly. But when it comes to, I identify as this, they're like, what the fuck? They're kind of like, it's they're kind of like that guy on TikTok. Somebody goes, hey. Looks like a male, but they go, I identify as she, her. My pronouns are she, her. And they're like that guy in the cowboy hat who goes, what? They're like that, except they're hateful and idiotic and ill-informed. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. <laughs> we did watch another movie, too, but you kept falling asleep through it, so. Yeah, Del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah. I, I was too fucking tired that I know, night. And, I just... and usually... Usually if I notice you're going to sleep, I'll just stop the movie. No, I was going to watch it. You were invested. <laughs> you were invested. It was so good. Oh, well, it's also Del Toro. You're like, I'm, I've am i already put in this much time. I'm going to finish this fucking movie. I, I have yet to go back to it. I just haven't taken the time to do so. 
I need to. I also want to go back and finish that anthology series he was a part of, The Cabinet of Curiosities, despite the fact that some, not all were great, I was still having a good time watching stuff and seeing him just be the Rod Serling type presenter. I, I just love Del Toro. We both just love Del Toro. It's why we're going to do a director spotlight later in the year on Del Toro. Yeah. Keep your ears open for that. I'll let you guys know when it comes closer. It's exciting. Portly Mexican gentleman that I love dearly. If I ever met him, I would fanboy and he'd probably be scaring me like, get this fucking white boy away from me. <sighs> you could take your action figure and be like, look, I have you at home. <laughs> He'll be like, this is awkward. Actually, he probably gets that all the time with people showing his action figure off to them if he's anywhere. Knowing me, I would have him sign Mr. Monkey. <laughs> that's apparently my thing. And don't forget, you also have, what, two books of his you could also get signed, too, probably. Yeah, but Mr. Monkey Mr. Is... Monkey is is the thing that you get signed. Yeah. I had Chris Calico give him a face. No, I just slept with it. <laughs> right. <sighs> Chris Calico. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I gotta go back and watch that, because from what I saw in the beginning was really good, and then I was just, I don't even remember what was going on, but I was so worn out that day. Ugh. I feel bad that I haven't gone back to it. It's okay, we will. I, I, I did watch the uh, 2021 Mortal Kombat movie. It's dumb fun. I don't know why they had to make up a character to put in the middle of Mortal Kombat when there's like 9 million characters to pull from across the entire franchise, but here's what I did enjoy. It was bloody as fuck. It it was gory. I mean, aside from people saying stuff like fatality or flawless victory, I'm like, okay, you're as cheesy as the 95 movie. So I'll I'll let you get away with that. I haven't but seen that one. It has Christopher Lambert as Raiden. Raiden is, I believe, the Chinese Thunder God. Christopher Lambert, French, playing an Asian deity. Nineteen ninety five, ladies and gentlemen. Back when we didn't know better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that went on for a number of more years. Um like recently when I was when I went on uh, Tales from Tales from the podcast with JB and we talked about the movie Retard Dead from 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um you can head over to Tales from the podcast and check out that show. I'm not going to go into it here, but uh Listen to two grown men try to dance around a touchy <laughs> subject. And it's no wonder why the filmmakers, the writers and directors of Retarded, who also did a movie I loved called Monstered, don't really want to talk about that movie. So head over to Tales of the Podcast, listen to that. We just did it this past Saturday, so... It's on YouTube. You can listen to the podcast feed. Check it out at wherever your podcasts are sold. And enjoy. And if you act now, you'll get a free pencil case with that. Bong, bong, pencil bong. case, not a real thing. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, other than that, I've just been consuming all the wrestling I can consume. I've been consuming all the TikTok I could possibly consume. You you are a fan of the TikTok. Well, I consider it, you know, my part-time job because as our bonding time, we do TikTok time. Yes. Because you refuse to get an account for your own reasons. You don't even want to deal with having to have another account. I get it. No worries. However, you still like to watch TikTok. So I'll go through and like certain things and make sure I like them in a specific order so that when we watch them together, it'll make sense. Yeah, but it's our bonding time. And I enjoy it, and I appreciate the effort you put into that. 
The reason I don't want to create a TikTok account, one, I'm going to feel like if I don't post anything, I'm going to be labeled as like some creeper or something. Two, I already go down weird rabbit holes on YouTube and the algorithm gets weird. TikTok, we've already seen, has gotten weird based on the stuff you've saved. We were in Capybara Talk for I don't know how long. Yeah, it's funny, to, you've gotten to see my FYP go absolutely bonkers for no reason. <laughs> Crazy old person drama TikTok. Sharon, I want to see the kids. Oh, I thought it was Shannon. <laughs> it's Sharon, it's Shannon. I saw earlier there was a YouTube short where somebody took the, you know, the new Burger King jingles where they're like, Whopper, Whopper, doing that, and then like, addressing the wife and going, I really want to see the kids again. Could you bring them back? I'm like, this is getting, this is going everywhere. It is flooding my life. What the fuck has happened? I love it. And because of Instagram and TikTok basically being the same platform but different, things cross over. Like the same creators kind of bounce between the two. So, Chicken Attack? <laughs> Which you showed me on TikTok, but I had seen on Instagram. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And apparently there is Chicken Attack. Pig Chicken Attack, which is the follow-up. Then there's an animated one called Cow Attack. And there's one called Rat Attack. You should know the Nana with the power of nature can bring you to the end of your life. And you should know by nature you are never alone and you can't live in long enough. Every piece, every piece. We can't play the whole thing, but... <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. I've become obsessed. Okay, I get these weird things that I get obsessed with. Like, yeah. you, way back when we first started dating, introduced me to Ninja Sex Party. Yeah. And then I became obsessed. Yeah. I have damn near every one of their songs saved in an I in a Apple Music playlist. Okay, obsessed. Then I started coming across these guys called the Merkins on YouTube. They would do these videos like for the Slash Street Boys. That has spiraled into other things they've done, and I've become obsessed with that. Now I'm obsessed with this fucking chicken attack thing. <laughs> and it's like six years old, and I had no idea how old it was. I'm just like, what the hell? So there's all these different ones. There's Rat Attack, where he's... There's a, there's a whole storyline going through all of these videos. I'm like, wait, so it's not just a random ass thing put together for chicken attack. No, there's a whole thing. I checked it out earlier today and I was like, I'm glad I did this. It seems like it gets to a slightly more serious, less comedic tone at some point, but don't ask me how. <laughs> the animated one for cow attack starts off to, it looks like They've stolen artwork from the Louvre, and the guy's like, the main guy from Chicken Attack, he's like, oh, don't mind me, I'm just walking my cow. And he's like, ah, oh, ha, 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 he's walking his cow. And then, of course, the cow is a secret ninja. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know why this is a thing, but mm. I, my life is better for it, and I'm obsessed with weird shit. I can't help it. But back to why I don't create a TikTok account. Those other reasons. Plus, my For You page would end up so screwed up that I would probably end up on the weirdest or darkest side of TikTok. And I'm not talking about the already dark, fucked up shit, the realistic shit we know what happens. I mean the darkest, most cringe-inducing side of TikTok. I would have those weird creators who just like look into the camera and go, look at my lazy eye while I eat pasta through my nose. Like, that's what my For You page would end I, I, up. I literally follow a page that's just um, stairway farts. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
But see, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. And I don't know any of these creators' names, but like the guy, the Asian guy who just lays in bed with the blankets over his head, just his face sticking out, and he just tells you, like when somebody goes, you'll never believe what was inside this inactive volcano that was hiding there for 50 million years. And he cuts in and goes, it was fossils of dinosaurs. It was all, it was fossils that they had already, the same fossils of something they already discovered. And it's just, it's just his face peeking out of these blankets sideways. Every video is the same thing. Like, they like the new shake from McDonald's. <laughs> Because every video starts with, you won't believe, or like, I found this incredible hack for blah, 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 blah. And then he just, the video cuts right of their injuries, like, oh, they did this. I follow so many chef cat profiles. <laughs> I, I never got into Vine either. Vine I discovered about, like, just before it was taken off life support. Because... Everybody was putting up all their vines on YouTube because they knew the end was near. But from what I understand, TikTok is basically just Vine, right? In a sense? I guess. I never got kind into of Vine, the same thing. but yeah, I, they put vines on TikTok, yeah. Yeah, I, I never understood, like, I'm going to take stuff from this other platform. I say that, and yet I watch React videos on YouTube to TikToks. I know. I know. I just like hearing people comment because it's like when we do it and I get other TikToks that they have, it's nothing that crosses over with us except maybe once in a while there's one that I've seen. I'm like, oh, I know that one. What are they going to say? But yeah, I just know I'd end up on the weirdest, weirdest side. It would be like Capybara talk. Pro I'd probably still get random old people domestic argument talk. Yeah. And now Jasper talk has evolved to uh, Grogu Jasper talk. Oh no. It's fantastic. <laughs> Basically, the voice of baby, uh, baby Yoda slash Grogu is Jasper. Oh no. <laughs> the oh, Barbie no. doll that uh, looks like a meth addict and sounds like she's got the lung cancer. <laughs> uh, What's so funny is if our buddy Paul from Invasion of the Podcast and Strange Highways hears this, he's going to be like, I don't fucking understand TikTok. It's just noise. He doesn't get it. It's fine. It's not And his him. wife loves TikTok. It's how you guys kind of bonded. Yeah. I send her birds. Birds being cute. Those birds on TikTok. Jeez. Yeah. I was... We had birds growing up. We had finches for a while, but I never was really like, after they died, I was like, okay, I don't ever want to deal with birds again. Like, seeing them outside in the sky, fine. But then, like, the personalities of these birds on TikTok. Why do these birds have so much charisma? I'm sorry. Riz. Riz. Because I gotta sound cool. Hashtag. Hashtag old, old guy. Hashtag old guy. <laughs> Hashtag I'm a stupid old guy trying to sound cool. Oh, like these birds are charismatic. Hashtag man. get off my lawn. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Hashtag my pronouns are. Well, I'm fucking Roseanne now. Wait, that. No, I'm not. Never mind. I'm not going to even elaborate. We'll just leave it as it is. Holy shit. Yeah, multiple reasons why I don't do TikTok. One, I'd be pressured. I feel like I would be pressured to create, even though there wouldn't be any pressure. No. Be like, I can't. I'm like, oh, just enough. don't be a jerk in the comments, and people won't come after you for having a blank profile. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I I would try to be funny, like I do on Instagram. Like every once in a while, I find myself wanting to correct somebody on Instagram when they post something, and I'm like, no, no, like. <sighs> Okay, there's a profile I follow on Instagram. Uh, I believe his name is Jason Roy Gaston or Gaston. He just reads funny signs, like misspellings and signs. or And there's, on Sundays, he will read religious-based signs. Or Facebook posts that are misspelled. Like somebody posted when he read it was, Not today, Satin. One that never gets old. So I made a post in the comments being funny, taking several things like, oh, I did this, that, and then I said, not today, Satin. People were commenting like, oh, yeah, that's funny. Oh, did you get ready for this, that? Somebody today just, 
apparently didn't watch the video because all they had was all they said was satin question mark. It's like the fourth thing in that he reads. It was like you didn't watch. You just read a comment and were like, "Did you misspell it?" And I wanted so bad, and I was just like, nope, just leave it. Let somebody else handle it. They don't understand what humor is. Move on. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I saw that, and I was like, I was so close to being like, did you fucking what? And I was like, no, no, this is somebody else's page. You're just wanting to contribute humor to what they're already doing. Don't make it a place of hate, because people do that already, and the guy's like, Hey, uh, you don't have to be here. You can leave and I won't care. He's called people out before. I'm like, awesome. Wh I, I don't know what else we can talk about because we just went on this long TikTok thing. I don't know. Well, we can touch a little bit on what we have coming up. The most, the more recent thing. And I think you're wanting to do this as much as me since you do love Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy's one of your favorites. Yeah. We're getting ready to dive into the Nightmare on Elm Street retrospective starting next week. Oh, yeah. Going through each movie. Yeah. Just talking about what we like, what we don't like, you know, if it holds up, if it's, you know, our experiences with seeing the movie. We've got some friends lined up. It was my first horror movie. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I grew up seeing all but the first one. So they always played like four and five. Scratch that. Three, four, and five. So I always I always knew Dream Warriors, Dream Master, and Dream Child. I didn't know the first or the second one or the later ones. Well, the later Freddy's Dead hadn't even come out yet when I was watching the others, but. Yeah, that I'm really looking forward to because I want to get other people's insights on it. We've got first-time people coming on the show, which is going to be fun. Like who? A uh, buddy of mine, Brian Wolford, who does the Midnight Drive-In podcast. He's going to be coming on to talk about Dream Warriors. He's got a doggy. He does. Yeah. Margot the Australian Shepherd. Yeah. She's a beautiful dog. We're going to have our buddy Chuck Nasty coming on at some point. We're going to do Freddy's Dead with him. He has a cat? He also has a dog now. Does he have a dog? Yeah. Oh. He's got this little dog. It looks like a chihuahua. I'm not sure, but his name is Bruiser. Oh. And it got stuck in his son's jacket and couldn't figure out how to get out one day. Oh. And he recorded it and he goes, I let, I, he goes, I helped the dog out, but I was, he goes, this dog is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you could just see its little tail was partially sticking out, so you could see this tail going every time you go, Bruiser, this tail, tail. And then it's like trying to walk around and like trying not to hit the walls, so it's like slightly moving, and it's just this jacket with this little tiny dog inside. <laughs> it's the funniest damn thing. We're going to have Chuck on. Still waiting to hear back from some other people. We've got that. We've got director spotlight things coming up, especially the Del Toro one. This is a tentative schedule. Nightmare's definitely happening. I know for sure we're definitely doing the Del Toro spotlight stuff. We've got some other things planned that I want to do. Uh, also, Nick Cage November is a staple around here. Even if we only do one movie, it's happening. This year I want to do a couple of movies for Nick Cage November. But I'm, I'm really looking to sink my teeth into Nightmare on Elm Street. It's, it's, it's been a while since I've watched any of the movies. I watched them in order, for that matter. Now, just so you guys know, we are only doing the original series that is 1 through 5. Yes, 1 through 5, Freddy's Dead, and New Nightmare. We are not going to do the remake. We've I think we've touched on that before, but it's not part of the franchise series that we're focusing on. We're focusing on what we grew up with. So that's what I want to talk about. Most of the guys, you know, two of the people coming on, Brian and Chuck, they grew up with these just like we did. So it's going to be a fun time. Get ready for that. That's going to start happening soon. Oh, I can't wait. It is one of my favorite franchises. It's right behind Friday the 13th because I'm, I'm an F-13 boy. I'm, I'm a Jason boy. It's, uh, 
I'm looking now with my Scream Shout Factory, Scream Factory box set of Friday the 13th, and sometimes I just stare at it and it brings me joy. You're a dork and I love you. Yeah, I am a dork. I'm glad you love me because I'm, I'm a huge dork. I wish they would do one for Nightmare on Elm Street. Even if it included the remake, I would figure out a way to get my hands on it. Because that would be awesome. The set I have now is perfectly fine. It holds all. It has all the movies in it. But I wouldn't mind a nice, big, beefy box set to get my hands on. Just hold and cuddle at night and stroke it and caress it and love it to bits. Just like the, you know, the character in Looney Tunes? That, yeah. 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 Basically, Lenny from Of Mice and Men. Hey! George Steinbeck reference on the show. We are educated people. Woohoo! What else you got, dear? Nothing. Nothing? No. Nothing? You brought nothing to the table? No, you brought plenty to the I, table. No, <laughs> I brought one thing to the table, and that's all I got. And if they don't like it, they can suck a bag of dicks. I don't give a fuck. Oh! I just remember, speaking of Nick Cage November, I remember a while back when we both got new coffee mugs and I got that really cool Batman one? It's not that big of a deal. No, but I finally want to let you talk about it because <laughs> I cut you off before. What is this mug you got? Because it is it is beautiful. It, so it's the thermal kind where it looks black and then when you put the hot coffee in... It changes to, it's a Nick Cage's face, and he's wearing like a uh, a flower head, like crown, and it says, "Shit, what does it say? You're my." I know I put you on the spot, and it's. <laughs> You're my national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. You're my national treasure. I was trying to pull up the orders to see if I could find it on Amazon real quick to see what it said. Yeah. And I was really excited to talk about it during whatever episode that was. And then you were like, oh, I feel so bad. I'm like, that's okay. I felt so bad because listening back, I was like, yeah, we got this cool mug. That's a cool Batman mug. Anyway, moving on. You're like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I wanted to give you the fair time to discuss your your coffee mug that you got that I'm going to admit is, a, is way better than my Batman mug. I wish it were bigger. Yeah. I like the 10 ounce. I like the big mugs. I like to drink a lot of coffee, apparently. You really do. Apparently, I'm a coffee person. Not not a... Okay. Not a coffee snob, like some of you are thinking. Like, I'm not like, this has to be a medium roast from Sumatra, blah, blah, blah. No, we I drink like 20 ounces of coffee. coffee. Yeah. Or more. Depending on how I feel. <laughs> Jeff. Oh my god. Sometimes I drink three cups of coffee. Wow. Three big mugs of coffee. You like coffee. Yeah. I like the flavored Keurig pods. No I wonder know we they're terrible, run out of creamer. I try not to put as much creamer when I'm having three <laughs> cups. I try to just put a splash. But if I know for some reason I'm only going to get one, then I might add a little extra just because... Like on appointment days, we'll say, for what I'm, you know, recovering from. I'll only have one cup of coffee, so I might, if I get it, I might add a little extra creamer. But yeah, I, I like my coffee. I like my big mugs. Although I, I do like the flash mug, which is standard. Yeah. That is. That's your absolute favorite. Yeah. It came back from the dead. Yeah. Thanks once again to our buddy Paul. I know I referenced it before, most likely, but he found the exact same mug that I got in one of those subscription boxes several years ago. Ended up broken, but somehow, some way, he internet sleuthed it and found the exact same thing. Yeah. So because of him, I'm able to drink flash coffee in the mornings. Thanks, Paul. And then I have to flash to the bathroom. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I don't want to thank him for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's oddly weird. Well, I guess in a way it is his fault that I have to go so much because I drink the flash coffee. Damn it, Paul. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 
uh, yeah, exciting things coming up. Yeah. The entire, I like I said, tentatively, we have the entire, I have the entire year planned out <laughs> for what we're going to do, but we're going to go back uh, to doing normal things after we do these one-off specials. Like, the retrospective is going to be just us having conversations about the movie, so tune in for those. We're going to be covering the entire original Night Run Elm Street series, and it's going to be a fun time. I don't know why I paused so long there. I'll cut this out, too. In the meantime, if you are looking to hear us, like I said, recently I was on Tales from the Podcast. You can head over to there. You can find them on social media. Just search Tales from the Podcast or on YouTube. Look for the last show and listen to two grown men try to not offend anyone and get canceled. Talking about uh, those who are special or mentally disabled. And called by a certain word we will not say. Because it is not correct. But you can also head on over to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Podcast. You can support the show. You can get transmissions episodes. And we are working towards getting those goddamn fucking commentary tracks to you. Are we? Yeah, we're working on it. Okay. I'm going to tell you more about it off air. We're going to get one okay. going here pretty soon. Cool. Because it's just going to be us ranting about what we love or what we hate about a movie. Okay, I can do that. That's yeah. easy. Yeah, first one's going to be Demon Knight, so... Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. one of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, uh, or I might hate it. No, everybody knows we love Demon Knight. Every, okay. Everyone pretty much loves Demon Knight. Okay. And if you hate Demon Knight, then that means you hate Billy Zane and I hate you. Because Billy Zane is a charming motherfucker in that movie. And I just, I just might have a fangirl moment seeing him come up and go, hold up, hold up, well, there, there, motherfucker. Yeah, he is dreamy in that movie. It's, it's a brilliant performance. Like, it's so over the top, but at the same time, it's, it's just. He's got that baby face. Yeah. Plus, he's a Pisces. <laughs> so he's all, like, charming and shit. Yeah, and you'll find out more. By heading over to our Patreon and becoming a supporter of the show. Yeah, it's like these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Put these nuts in your face. <laughs> then you rub them all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> It'll shoot you off into outer space. These nuts. These nuts. In your face. In space. Holy shit. Oh, man, I lost what I was doing. Oh, I was doing the promo. If you want to Sorry. contact us, if you want to contact us, skewerduniversepodcast at gmail.com. Shoot over your questions, anything you want to talk about. Uh, if you do support us on Patreon, though, you get to suggest things that we can do. You can there go there and look at the support levels. Help us keep this ball rolling. Why did I only get a personality at the very end of the episode? Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. Certain <laughs> certain things took time to kick in. All right. Cool. <laughs> you can find us on Apple. We're on Google, Spotify. If you have an Amazon connected device, tell that bitch to look up Skewered Universe and she will. You can listen to us there. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Look for Skewered Universe Podcast or search Skewered U. We're there. You'll find updates for the shows there. Also, do you want to start a podcast? Is that something you really want to do? Well, you can follow the link in our description because we are a Podbean affiliate. What does that mean exactly, Leanne? Well, I'm going to tell you what it means. I'm going into, <laughs> I'm going into oh my, my uh, infomercial guy here. <laughs> like you're not even giving me a chance to answer. <laughs> has that pan burned all of your food? I'm going to tell you why it burns all that food, because you're a horrible person. No. I thought you were going to say a whore. <laughs> oh my, my god. god. <laughs> Jeff Ruth. No, 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 no. But anyway, we are a proud affiliate with Podbean. That means if you want to start a podcast, and I highly recommend that if you have something you want to talk about, you do. You use the link in our description with any paid premium unlimited plan with Podbean, you're going to get a month for free. That's like 
a good deal. So if you want to start, you pay up front, you get a month for free, boom, get started. Use that month to put out whatever podcast you want to talk about. Full transparency, we get something on the back end from that. So for every one of you that wants to start a podcast, you pay, you get a month free, we get something on return. Full transparency there, but use the link in the show description to go to Podbean. Use our specific link. Get that month for free with your paid unlimited plan. Let your voice be heard. Because podcasting was started by people by us. It wasn't celebrities who started this shit. It was people who wanted to talk about movies. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Joe Rogan didn't start this shit. <laughs> Somebody's going to hate me for that, but they're probably on steroids anyway. That being said, Land, do you have anything else you'd like to contribute to this <laughs> ranty end of an episode? I contribute nothing to that. <laughs> <laughs> well then how about we just tell everyone to keep on enjoying that universe that's just a bit skewered